I uh, welcome everybody. Uh, we're going to be addressed tonight by uh, uh, by uh, Gerald Cross. She's a real artist, and she's also had an incredibly responsible position for a very long period of time through a tumultuous time. She was 30 years the art editor at the New York Times, the newspaper, world newspaper of record. And she also has a very interesting sense of, uh, of art. And she was one who was the editor for 13 years, if I'm not mistaken, with the uh, op ed, the art editor for the op-ed page. It was introduced to the New York Times in that magical year, 1970, um, and where they brought in illustrations in order to break up the text and so forth. And as she talked to me on a program we aired today, up until that time, that page opposite the editorial page and that newspaper record had been obituaries. Then they made it into perhaps the first page everybody turned to, and she, she made it stand out by introducing art. And art, by well, a lot of people who took exception to some of the, blogivate, blog, the the people who were running the world and so forth, as artists tend to do. And she's written now a book, and I'll hold it up. Try to come in. Can you come in tight or not? Yeah. Can you come in tight? This is the book that she's going to be talking from, and it's titled um, All the Art That's Fit to Print and some that wasn't, and it's subtitled, Inside the New York Times op-ed page. New York Times is inhabited by some of the largest egos in all of the world. There's a great deal of contention, and there's, you know, walking that careful line. And she did that successfully for a record 30 years and 13 years as the op-ed editor. And it's got an incredible story. It's beautifully written. And she's going to show us some slides and talk about her experience. And uh, it's a pleasure to have her here because we're all interested in art, and we're all interested in infecting uh, national or world consciousness. Hold the book higher. Hold the book higher. Well, he's, he's coming in on it, darling. Oh, oh, hold it higher. Okay, for the web stream. Uh, we are streaming this to the web, so those of you who may have tuned in, uh, I, we don't have uh, audio connection with you. Yes, but you do. We do have audio. Uh, they're going to call? No, they hear no, us. They can chat in. How do they chat in? I didn't they know. They have this chat feature online. Well, what will happen if they do? How will they interject their voice into this proceeding? Well, they, they won't. Uh, you won't see it right now. Okay, you won't see it right now. That's good, because that would have been breaking my train of thought. But anyway, they're doing that, and they can type in. They can text. I'd like to know, and I'm going to get from John Kowalski tonight, if I can, an explanation of why the young people are texting. I can't understand it, but never mind, that's the sidebar. But welcome very much. And so, oh, one last thing, anybody who's not or is interested, we've got some little floor, uh, uh, clipboards with uh, getting address and phone number and email and so forth if you want to be associated with the ACAP uh, business. And there's a thing you can slip a business card in. And if at the end of the evening you want to put your name down and everything, you'll get you on the list and that sort of thing. Okay? So I think then, without, as they say, Further ado, we, uh, it's my great good pleasure to welcome uh, welcome you to the thoughts and what and wisdom and thoughts of our guest. Please give her a rousing welcome, uh, Jarrell Crop. Thank you very much. Well, and what this book does is take you inside the New York Times, and so you experience uh, the, the real New York Times policies and even work that was killed by the New York Times. It's the only book that does so, so you won't find any other uh, place what you're going to see. Uh, about a third of the book was never. The imagery was never seen, seen here for the first time. Uh, this, as you know, is the cover of the book. We need to turn the lights down. The lights have yeah. to go down. Thank you. Let's see this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I 
dark in the hall. Right. We'll do that now. The and then the pictures will stand up. Okay. That's, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. John, that's good. turn off the light. That's good because then I lose the camera. No, that's yeah. actually, we're okay now. That light's. That, no. Oh. Back on. Back, Back on. This is going yeah. to be at the end. That's good. That's good. That's perfect for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I guess. Oh, it looks good. Yeah, I think this is a good compromise. Can you see the images? Yeah. Laura, can you see them? Yes. Turn off that light. Hmm? Okay. So, the idea, what happened is actually. Uh, the new, the op-ed page began in 1970, as Harold said, that previously that page was devoted to obituaries and only obits, and uh, it had been <coughs> handled by the newsroom because it's called just the facts now, you know, in, in the obits. And so uh, they were very reluctant to, to uh, allow anyone else to touch that page. However, in 1958, John Oakes, an extremely progressive man who was with the Oakes family, but he was a black sheep, he was a real scholar, he was an intellectual, and he was the only one in the family who did never, he was never a publisher or on the board. He was always a writer and, and an editor. And he had the idea in 1958 to have a page that would be open to outside uh, writers and artists. And this was the first, uh, there, there was no such page. And we're talking about the New York Times, which takes itself very seriously, as it should. And so it took him 12 years. This page took 12 years to gestate, because it was a fight between the newsroom and the editorial staff. The newsroom felt that they, they did not want to give up the whole page. And the editorial staff felt that the newsroom could not edit a page that was opinion. So uh, finally, after 12 years, Punch Salzberger uh, decided that to give it to the editorial people. And so it, it uh, was, so uh, when I work uh, as on the page, anyone working on the page, uh, but in, as an art director, I had an office on the editorial floor and on the uh, art floor. Uh, but, oh, here. Um, okay. Now, the idea of the op-ed uh, uh, page was to have outside opinion, and uh, they, but they didn't know how to visualize this page. How, how would they break up the grave, actually? There was really no interest in art, but they wanted to, you know, alleviate the, this great text. So they started um, to try to figure out some ways to do that, and really the only ways that had, the only visuals that had ever been used in newspapers were political cartoons and photographs, photojournalism, but uh, political cartoons were too partisan for the New York Times, which did not want to be uh, alive with a single stance, and, and uh, photographs really can't uh, illustrate opinion, so they had to come up with some something to break up the ground. And <coughs> finally, um, they got a, a, an art director, Jean-Claude Suarez, in 1970, when Page finally was able to start. And he brought in uh, some very interesting artists, eventually, after seven months of uh, trying and showing art that was, that was denied and, and disapproved of. Finally, he, he had a breakthrough. And uh, some of the work is, uh, of this work is, of course, in the book. I'll just show you a very small portion of the 320 illustrations by 131 different artists from every continent um, in the world. Uh, here's, here's a, a piece <coughs> by, <coughs> this, this illustrated a piece by General Westmoreland, who, as you know, uh, was directed the Vietnam War, and he, uh, gave a defense in this, art, in this article of how the U.S. really should have won the Vietnam War. You know? And uh, it was very interesting that the like, U.S. had everything going for it and it should never have lost. However, the artist who 
illustrated is Mati Michael Matthias Pachtel, a German artist, and he illustrated with a picture of the victor of the Vietnamese War, who was Premier Van Dong of North Vietnam, who was never mentioned by Westmoreland. And so that's what the, the art did, was to add and enrich and, and give depth. And this art was exhibited in the Louvre in 1974. So it was really important, uh, and it was more towards fine art, more towards data and surrealism and uh, it, it, the, the newspaper art had ever uh, been, and that's why there was a whole exhibit in the, in the Louvre on the museum. Here's a, here's a, a piece by uh, Jean-Michel Follon, a, a Belgian, and this is the most difficult thing to illustrate, void or emptiness. This is an article written by a widower who had just lost his wife. Uh, here's, Girl, here's a point in case you want to point oh, it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and this, as you can see, is Idi Amin, our friend, uh, who himself personally uh, machete uh, humans with his own hands. Um, many thousands. Uh, yet this art, uh, by a Peruvian artist, was considered, it, it never appeared, it was considered uh, too vicious, a portrait of, of Idi Amin, and there, there's not even any blood on it, but it never ran. That's, that's the, the part, the part because it goes, editors are afraid of it, because art goes right to the right brain, you know, the, the, the processes viscerally, immediately, and even subliminally, mm -hmm. and uh, so that, that's scary. You know, whereas the words, you can say, you can talk about blood and guts and gore, but to show it is another thing. And that uh, frightens editors. Uh, and so this never ran, but you'll see it in the book and many, and many others. There's, this is uh, when I first began in 1978. I, I subbed for two weeks. And um, <clears throat> after doing that for two weeks, I went back to a, a weekly uh, part of the, of the Times, a weekly section. I was very pleased and it was much better scheduled. Uh, but then I was asked to rise to become the op-ed art director. And, and, and finally, after twice refusing, uh, I was sweet-talked. And one of the things the editor said was that uh, there was more mail while I was subbing than they'd ever gotten about the art. It was rare to get mail about the art. And I think this is one, one of the, or the reason. And this is a piece by David Souter. I hope you can see that it's J. Edgar Hoover. And, and he has, uh, his face is made up of uh, spies, G-men. Um, and there was, because we had an ad here, uh, there was no room for his body. So we, I had to cut his body, and I, but I put his feet at the end of this oh. tight leg, which subsumed his body. Uh, this is David Souter, who's a brilliant artist, and uh, you'll see maybe something else of his. This, this is the first page that I actually did when I came back from India and, and in 1979 and uh, uh, became the, you know, the art director. Uh, and this is by Franek Sargieski, and he was the first of the Polish artists who really created the poster as a genre. He, very important parts. Um, this yeah. was a, my, my first scandal. This is 1979. I was green. I'd recently come from California. And I thought, well, I, had, I read this wonderfully uh, scathing piece on Henry Kissinger, who's uh, who, who, talking about his, how he's a complete war criminal. And there he is living right over there on the east side uh, very happily. Uh, but he is a war criminal. and. Uh, so I thought I could hire David Levine, and, and David came up with this brilliant piece with, uh, you can see on the arms, uh, RN uh, for Nixon, and mother, and uh, Viet Vietnam is dark, <coughs> and bombs uh, on Cambodia. And, uh, I, of course, my editor uh, looked at it and, and we just, you know, uh, shut the eyes and, and just couldn't stand to look at it. And I said, 
I offered to crop it mid-dragon, uh, <laughs> but uh, that wasn't the problem. It uh, seemed to be much deeper than that, and I said, oh, that's not the problem. But uh, unfortunately, this was killed, and so again, it's in the book for the first time. Point out that the Shaw is on the left side. Yes, uh, we see the Shaw. And, I mean, oh, his his crimes are so great. Uh, one of my uh, <laughs> Shaw's least favorite is the, is the fact that he is absolutely responsible for um, for killing and Nayende uh, in Chile and uh, uh, all the propaganda, and economic campaigns, and all this. Uh, complete BS that he created in order to have the people uh, against Allende, who, who really was never going to turn to the Soviet Union. Uh, he was very much a, just trying to help his people. Uh, anyway, so, uh, but that sort of thing, you can, you can, you can read, but to, to show it is another thing. Um, here's a, so I, I began to uh, use actual fine artists. This is uh, Romare Bearden, an African-American, uh, very, very well known um, US <coughs> artist. Um, and this is just a Ugandan farmer. He was gracious enough to give this to me. It's a valuable piece. Um, <clears throat> and how Ugandans were uh, exporting proudly food to neighboring countries. Uh, here's Larry Rivers, who did nine, he's a, a big, big name artist who sells his work for millions, uh, died recently. Uh, but he did nine pieces uh, for op-ed at $250 each, which is you know, peanuts for him. Uh, but he, he enjoyed it tremendously. And if you remember, uh, perhaps some of you, uh, the, uh, this little uh, escapade where Reagan invaded this island, this tiny little island of Grenada. And so uh, Larry did this piece, which was freestanding. And it's modeled on the Washington crossing the Delaware. He calls it Reagan crossing the Caribbean. Uh, Andy Warhol, uh, a pretty well-known guy. I again, this was still uh, early in my time there. And I thought, well, uh, very early '79, and uh, a pollster had written uh, a piece. Uh, saying that Ted Kennedy, who was running for president in uh, 1980, was not very well known. You know, the Kennedys were known, but he, his policies weren't well known. And, and so I asked Andy to do a kind of a shadowy, ambiguous portrait that, uh, you know, that people were just really didn't know who he was. And uh, he asked me for a scrap, which is for an artist, uh, photographs, <coughs> research photographs, and uh, now it's unnecessary because of the internet, but uh, so I sent him uh, three photographs and what he did was to, to project them. He simply projected them and, and you know, did these contour drawings which I got on these huge archers paper, uh, uh, heavy stiff paper, very valuable pieces and I presented them to the editor and, uh, uh, and I was told that they say nothing said, we can't publish them because they say nothing. Of course, I was devastated. I said, well, can't we just publish a signature? You know? <laughs> I, 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 even, I tried, I, tried uh, I put the text inside this, uh, this profile, and, and I did everything, but I couldn't save it. And so, I, well, there was a, a five-person uh, five staff at that time, and we had a vote, and one uh, brave assistant editor stood with me on the losing side. So. Um, I, so they left me at, uh, this was late on a Friday night, and this was killed, um, this was to run on Sunday, and they decided to go home, and they left me to do it myself, um, and I started thinking ink blot, you know, that if people project uh, your own idea onto, onto something, and, and so I, I did this, uh, with Kennedy, um, just a drawing, and um, I, uh, I signed it to Rel Warshaw. And it went right into the paper because I was alone. I did alone, and but you know, and, and I just signed it to a war shock. I, the, the, the the horror when I came in on Monday was that oh, you, I was shouted at. You cannot run pseudonyms in the New York Times. <laughs> so I mean, uh, preciousness is uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, it, it, Molly Ivinson said that uh, working at the New York Times is no fun. Um, 
Uh, well, uh, remember this guy, Nixon? I, I, you can tell, <laughs> this interesting thing about him, the tapes, this is Seymour Quas who did this, and, and uh, but the interesting thing is you can tell it's Nixon, even though you see only that hairline. Uh, it's just so obvious. Well, um, there was a lot of uh, Nixon work, uh, Watergate, the whole, of course, everything that, all the crimes that he uh, committed as president, uh, mainly, I, in my opinion, Vietnam and Cambodia, but uh, the Christmas bombing of Cambodia. But um, what happened is that uh, a very bizarre thing happened. I um, did a, a drawing, uh, of Nixon had written an article for us on how uh, Reagan should be talking uh, to the, what Reagan considered the evil empire and go to uh, regular summits. Uh, and, and Reagan was, was very uh, reluctant to do that. And so I, I put, uh, I made a, a portrait of Brezhnev and Nixon together. I don't have it here, but it's, uh, uh, it was a simple thing. And, and I walked in my office that, that morning, and uh, it was a, the phone was already ringing. And it was a call from Ray Price, who was, uh, and he said, I have the president who would like to speak with you. So uh, there was Nixon on the phone uh, saying, I'd like to have a copy of, I'd like to have the original of the drawing you did in this morning's paper. And it was completely shocking to me. I asked him, uh, well, what are you offering me? The original is valuable. And, and he said, I'd like to give you an autographed copy of my memoir. Well, actually, you know, Brezhnev made me a much better author. <laughs> and he didn't laugh, though. He didn't have a sense of humor. Brezhnev is long dead, but he didn't have a sense of humor. So, um, anyway, so I, but I decided I would go. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the Secret Service came in and took this picture. Uh, I was told to go to 26 Federal Plaza. Uh, I took the original, I put it in a little uh, dime store frame, and then I painted red for the occasion. And, uh, I, uh, and actually, there it is, uh, sitting there, right uh, there, um, uh, here. And, uh, but uh, uh, <clears throat> it, I was told that, that to go down the long hall and that to an unmarked door. And it was a, a knock I had to perform. I had to go <laughs> pause and then one more. <laughs> so, that, I, I thought, my God, I'll be entering a cabal. You know? <laughs> and and I, I, I was alone with Nixon for almost three hours. Um, and it was quite an experience. You read about it in the book. It, it, I can't, it's too much of a story to go into now. But um, it was quite uh, extraordinary. There was some very unusual things that happened. And uh, in, in this, but um, yeah, I, I managed to survive. <laughs> Uh, and, and it was a, a vast office, and uh, I, I, again, I said, it was alone. Ray Price was sitting in the corner, he was kind of this alter ego, he was sitting in the corner, he was a football field size. Uh, and uh, the Secret Service came in and took this picture, and you see Checkers, who once saved Nixon for, when he was fighting for his life in, uh, over taxes that he didn't pay, um, and uh, he has a statuette of, uh, Checkers facing out. You know, we normally have we normally have our, our family pictures, you know, facing towards us, right? And and but he's you know facing out, still performing public relations. Um, then, then oh, here's a piece of this is uh, Mother Russia, you know, pointing her missiles everywhere. And uh, the interesting thing here is that uh, this is a collage done uh, from uh, maps, obviously. And uh, by Anita Siegel, and uh, I got a call the morning it ran from Rand McNally, and they they said that they wanted to sue. Was it the lawyer Rand McNally who said I he wanted to sue the Times because people could use this drawing instead of buying one of their maps. <laughs> and I, but he, I I was actually shocked, but but he actually finally backed off when I pointed to the proximity of. Siberia and Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is one of the outrageous uh, things that happened late when I did this car trekking in the 90s. I had two, what I was fired by one uh, editor after 10 years. Work. I worked with six of the nine editors, and 
I, as, I, as uh, Harold said, I, I was at the Yelp page for 13 years, and there were 31, art, they're now on their 31st art director, and I did it for 13 years, and nobody did it for longer than about a year, or a year and a half. Some people did it for only a week, and were just disgusted because it was a very demanding job. But I found it quite thrilling, and uh, I missed this challenge. Well, here was a piece. This, there was a blizzard in 1888, a famous blizzard that occurred after a, a warm winter, actually. And so it, it was very bizarre, and, and we had a letter about it. And so this is a, a two-inch piece of art done by Kathy Hall. And what she did was to do a, temp a thermometer standing up in a snowstorm. And the thermometer is calibrated mercury at you know above 90 degrees, uh, and everybody loved it and this little thing and, and to, to brighten up the page and and suddenly at the last moment just before uh, the page went to press, I was called and said this art can't run, and it, it was Hal Raines uh, who has now been fired from the Times, but he was an uber editor at the time. And uh, I said, why not? He said, well, it's an ejaculation. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, it was too late to do anything. It was too late to do a sub art. I had to just do a type blur. Um, here's a, a, there was a piece of China and, and how it was, uh, China and Taiwan and how the, the, the this internal was struggling. And here's uh, David Souter's work where you see that, that the dragon was at the same time the Great Wall, and it's subsuming Taiwan, but it was, this was a hill, this gorgeous drawing, this kind of pointless, you know, like a Syrah drawing, um, was, was killed because it was too fierce. And I've, I've never seen a sweet dragon, but uh, there we go. So you'll see it in the book for the first time. And now here's a, another one that was killed. This is by Ronald Searle, who Mar this March 3rd will be 90. Uh, he's living in the south of France, and he's the greatest uh, graphic artist alive. Uh, so here we have, for Valentine's Day, it was a uh, fe fe female feline, you know, uh, walking down past all these proper uh, cats of her same species, proffering these bouquets properly, and going towards this fish carrying rat. And, uh, and, but, you know, it was fun, it was comic, and, and but why, why do you think this could be killed? Why was it killed? It was killed because it was politically incorrect. It, it in, implies that ladies love outlaws, <laughs> which of course is true. Um, uh, this is actually a drawing that I did for a piece on uh, Karl Marx having an illegitimate son with a maid. And since it was a live-in maid, somebody had to take credit, so Engels took the rap just like he finished the last volume of Das Kapital. And, um, but I, you know, my, my editor said, well, can't you make him a little less pregnant? And then uh, my art boss said, uh, the next day after it was published, he said, it was vulgar and tasteless. And I was devastated. But the, the interesting thing is that it, it went on to win a very big award, and there were 52 people on that jury, and he, the person who said it was vulgar and tasteless, was on that jury. Uh. And, uh, but he never told me how he voted. <laughs> but, uh, and th that was uh, an award given by the Art Directors Club, which, is, uh, which gives most of its awards to television and advertising art direction. This was given for art direction, but also as an illustration. Um, and um, there were two others given that year. There haven't been any since. Uh, and, and this is one of them. This, is, this was uh, the 50th anniversary of uh, this man's uh, <coughs> being put in as chancellor in Germany uh, by, you know, he was head of a small party, the National Socialists. And they thought, well, there's no, you know, just kind of a placeholder in Germany. Well, 50 years later, uh, uh, we uh, uh, commemorated the anniversary of, of this 1933 occurrence. And Marshall Erisman, who did the uh, painting, actually, said that uh, he was so glad to be able to do Hitler because he could go all out. There was no problem. And 
holding back. Uh, it was also, and, then, and then the third one that won an award uh, it was this one that was actually done by Brad Holland uh, for a piece on feminism. And, uh, but it wasn't used. It was killed for that. And I, uh, I offered it for a, a text that we had on uh, the fact that the U.S. was ignoring all of the other Arab states in favor of Lebanon uh, as its sole focus. So I, that's, that's what I explained to the editors, that, that that's what this drawing was meant for, and it worked. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, well, this, this is kind of interesting because um, I was asked by my editor, it's a very unusual uh, occurrence, to, to do a very specific image. The, the Baltimore Oriole had, had been um, consorting with too many uh, other breeds. And uh, so the mayor of Baltimore wrote us this furious letter, furious text, you know, say, article saying that the ornithologist had demoted or had renamed uh, the Baltimore Oriole and called it the Northern Oriole. And he was very upset about this. And so my editor asked to have the Baltimore with the specific markings of the uh, portrayed as the image. Well, I was against that because I thought, well, that's kind of, you know, dumb and it's not very political. It's not, and, but, it, uh, and so I, but I put it in the middle of the page and uh, because, you know, it was a rare request. And then uh, just a couple hours before the page closed, we got two articles from Vietnamese boat people. And they're very powerful. So we put them on the page as a lead to stories. And, uh, I, I said these, these absolutely deserve the art space because they're so much more important. Um, uh, but my editor insisted on the bird, so I decided to, uh, you know, depict the, uh, the the Vietnamese boat people in the nest, the very specific uh, hanging purse nest that the that the Oriole builds, and to make these little baby birds. And, and I did this by, uh, you know, asking the copy editor to make the shortest, I and mean, it's one column, one line uh, headline, and another one. And I used the, this twig instead of the Scotch rule. And I was man managed to get this little space, and, and then I moved the Oriole down here to and put a worm in her mouth so that it's like Mother America uh, reaching up to help uh, uh, the, these poor people in these little, you know, rafts, you know. So uh, <clears throat> that's that's the kind of thing you have to do work very fast, but it's uh, challenging. This is uh, this for you cable producers is of interest because uh, we had a piece on how uh, the networks are going to lose out because when cable came in, that uh, everyone feared that you know, the networks would, nobody would be interested. And they would all unplug, you know, from from the networks. And, and Horacio Cardo, who's an Argentine artist, living in Argentina now, um, did, you know, use the, the Medusa idea, and it, instead of hair, of course, uh, electric plugs, uh, and... Uh, <laughs> Medusa. Yes, now, Gunter Grass, who you know is the, is the author of The Tin Drum, yeah. Uh, he also does etchings, and uh, I asked him to do one for uh, oh, a piece gosh. on dioxin and how dioxin uh, yeah. really mutilates and and, uh, and, uh, and and creates mutations of, of infants uh, it's in the water. And uh, and this is a plastic doll that he did, and it's you know distorted, and he has a signature fish in there. And, well, that ran; there was no problem. Um, but, and of course the text was devastating about the dangers of dioxin. But we got a letter on the art. We didn't get any letters on, on the text, but we got one on the art that said that this was, uh, that he knew, he said, that, that this is a horrible poison and, uh, and it does all this damage. However, this horrible drawing uh, made me lose my breakfast and ruined my day. And the interesting thing is that he himself, angry about the image being too strong, decided to 
in cl to close his letter with a, a portrait of himself losing his breakfast right. and, and making that, that very statement mm. that, that, the, that art is so powerful that it, it, you know, it hits you immediately. Uh, now, here's, a, here's a, um, a piece that I'm showing to, to let you know why editors are wary about the art. Um, again, this was a small one, two inches. And it, was a, it illustrated an article about how rich people decide elections, they sort of buying votes. You know? And can anybody figure out why this could be a problem? There we go. Very good. Yes. It, it, <coughs> nobody saw it. You know, nobody saw it. I didn't know the artist, and, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, all the top editors. But what happens is that these look like stars of David. Mm -hmm. and, but it was yeah. done by a Dutch artist, Nair Beck, who didn't know from uh, Judaism and uh, or anything and uh, about, uh, you know, the Star of David, but he just simply had uh, copied these from the Montgomery Ward catalog <laughs> of how jewels were faceted. Mm -hmm. And and so it, it, we got so many letters and calls and, you know, anger about, uh, you can imagine it, because this is about rich voters. So um, I had to write a correction that was uh, in the paper the next day. Uh, now, here's... This illustrated a piece on corporate welfare in the U.S. You know, and, and I, I just love this image. I thought it was perfect, done by Brian Crone, an Irish artist who I'd met when he just came off the boat. This was a little later. But uh, he, he, you know, the idea of uh, sucking on the Florida teeth was just too much for my editors. They, could, they loved the idea. It was absolutely perfect for the article, but uh, it, it was just too strong. So, I begged Brian to do, you know, to, with the same idea to try to calm it down a little bit so we could run something with the same idea. He was very much against it, but we went through many different uh, <laughs> incarnations until we finally got to something that was neither human or human. There, there were drops of milk, and, uh, but uh, not, this is the only way we were able to publish it. <laughs> Not as good. <laughs> Not it, it lacks the oomph of the uh, original. Yes, and, uh, no, no. But uh, okay, here's here's a, a piece that uh, I was asked by Hal Raines, who is the one who killed the monitor, Jacqueline, and, uh, and uh, he, he asked me to to come up with some art that, that we could use any time when when he. In other words, when he needed to kill something, if he had it, he said something that's just generic, that doesn't make for anything topical, just general, maybe just something designing. Well, I wanted it to be a real statement, but it had to stay on its own. So I came up with 38 pieces that could be used. Uh, and this is one uh, by Hans Georg Rauch, a, a German artist. Actually, he was a Hitler Jugend. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, raised in the <clears throat> by you know, the product of an aviator and a ballerina, and, uh, but anyway, the, it's about book censorship. Obviously, they're all bricked up, and I was saving this wonderful piece of art for the perfect opportunity. Uh, but what happened was that when I showed it to Hal Raines, he wrote me this note back. He said, <clears throat> "I think you can read it. This." this uh, this, what does it say? This solves the, the, need, the, the, the need for a geometric piece of, uh, yeah, of art that, for letters. Let's get it ready. Uh, and so he wanted it to run just a little tiny, and it would lose all meaning. But he didn't care, because it, it was just you know, a design. Uh, here's, a, here's a piece uh, by Ralph Steadman, who uh, wrote the foreword for my book. Uh, it, it was on Nuclear Doomsday kind of by Kurt Vonnegut, who actually did promise to write the foreword, but unfortunately uh, lapsed into a coma a few months later. Uh, it, it, but this includes the watch uh, from, that was worn by the pilot of the Enola Gay, who bombed uh, Hiroshima. 
Uh, there was a time when Eastern Europeans began to really uh, come to uh, the U.S. in great numbers. Uh, in, in my case, the ones I got to meet were artists, and the largest group of them were, were Poles. Uh, this, this is, is done, uh, this obviously, Lech Wałęsa, it was done in 1981, mm -hmm. when Solidarity began, which, which is the, the first, uh, you know, uh, well, beginning of the whole uh, end of communism, you know, ended in 19, 18, 1989 in most of the uh, Eastern Bloc, uh, in velvet revolutions, except for in Romania, where it was bloody. Um, but uh, you can see here, perhaps, that, that Valenza is made up of only people carrying solidarity <coughs> banners. There's nothing but figures and the banners. And yet it reads completely as the man, right? Um, and the interesting thing about uh, uh, Andrei Druzinski is that he was very interested in doing anti-Soviet pieces. He, he had just left in a very difficult way from Poland, and, uh, but he, he couldn't sign his own name because he knew that he wouldn't be able to return to his home uh, if he did. And so um, in this case, pseudonyms were okay because it was a political reason. And so we use the most, uh, like a, a John Smith or John Doe, we use Jan Kowalski, which is the Polish equivalent. And so all of them, all of his anti-Soviet pieces were signed Jan Kowalski. And, but then, uh, unfortunately, his mother died and he wanted to go back home, of course, for the funeral and, um, and to be with his family. But he went to, to get his visa in, in the embassy uh, here in New York, and it was refused because they opened the drawer uh, under D for Dzerzhinsky, and there were all the Kowalski pieces. So we did not fool the Soviets, the, you know, the Yaroslavsky regime in Poland. Cool. <laughs> And uh, Andre could not go back. He is there now. But, uh, this, this is another poll of uh, uh, Winter. Oh, that's and this is done by Rafał Obinski, who did many wonderful pieces. This is made um, a poster and won the prize in, in Paris to uh, the world's most memorable poster. Please, uh, so it's called. Well, Saul Steinberg is a Romanian uh, who refused, he, he hated the New York Times all his life. He refused to do anything for the New York Times because he felt and legitimately that there were two artists who were copying him. And unfortunately, um, he took this to heart. I think he maybe he was big enough that he, he needn't to have done so, but he did. And uh, But I had the good fortune of uh, spending some time with him and uh, getting to know him a little bit. And um, after a while, I, I, I thought, well, maybe, just maybe. And for July 4th, I took two different ma majorettes from uh, different parts of, of his work, and I put them together. And I called him, and I said, uh, would, would, you, would you allow me to run this? It's, it's, it's not, it's your work, but it's a different, layout. And he said, well, send it to me overnight. So I did. And I got a call in the morning. He said, I loved it. And I could run it. So I think this is the only sanctioned, and I'm pretty sure this is the only sanctioned uh, Steinberg that's ever run in the Times. Uh, now, I, when I was in Belgrade, I met a number of Serbian artists who uh, later moved here and, and uh, they're in Canada and the U.S. And, uh, but some of them are still there. Yugoslav Bakovic is still there, and he uh, did a lot of work from this. But this one was done by Goran Delic, and um, it's, it was about, um, the, the piece is about uh, tariffs in, uh, or autos uh, coming, you know, J J Japanese, U.S. Um, uh, financial uh, issues. And, and, and he made a, Jap a Japanese Zen garden of autos. And he had a, a full-length figure of a Japanese gardener. 
raking these flies into this garden or out of the garden. And my editors uh, said, oh, no, you can't, show a Jap you can't show a Japanese person as a gardener. I said, he, they said, this is a stereotype. I said, well, but, but this is in Japan, you know. <laughs> but uh, that was always uh, an issue that, you know, you can't stereotype uh, people. And I, I'm still waiting for the day when, when a black woman will signify personhood. <laughs> um, Mirko Illich came from Bosnia, and um, he, this is his piece on uh, the Iraq War, which started, as you know, in 19, uh, 2003. And uh, <laughs> the, it, it's, uh, I think it's quite interesting, it's, you know, an insurgent. Uh, uh, and the idea was that uh, we really can't expect to win a war against people with lip flops, because we already lost one. <laughs> said people who were wearing flip flops. Uh, now, um, Mirko had seen uh, this piece that I did early. Um, uh, it was about dirigibles, and the copy editor and I uh, cooperated on creating this by hand before computers. Um, and it, it's you know the shape of a dirigible, but it is it, at at once the text. And Mirko had seen this, and he went to his editors and said, well, can't we just do this? Uh, also, now, now that we have computers, and, and uh, they were <coughs> but he said, okay, I'll do it myself. And he did, it's a brilliant work. Um, and this is two views of the Anti-Defamation League, uh, which, are, which again, is just the type is the image, and this is Hillary smiling and Thanksgiving. Um, and, then uh, Mirko stayed for 18 months, and then they asked me to come back. Uh, so after being fired after 10 years uh, in the 80s, I was, uh, got a little bit of sweet revenge. I was asked to come back. And, uh, and then I uh, was using the Macintosh, and, uh, and I was inspired by Mirko's, who had, and uh, Mirko's work. And, and uh, this is for one of the pieces that I did in a similar vein, using the type as an image, was uh, when uh, Gore was vice president and he was assigned by Clinton to streamline government. And this article said that, well, he did a, a pretty good job, but not a great job. So I gave him a great. And now we're uh, getting closer to uh, today. Uh, do you remember in uh, 2000, there was, uh, we had this uh, election uh, that unfortunately was decided after months by the Supreme Court. Um, uh, and uh, Ward Sutton is an artist who sent us this uh, while the decision was going on for months and months, you know, uh, the, the, the Florida election was still being decided. And, um, well, when it was finally, uh, when this guy was finally chosen uh, by the Supreme Court, or, uh, we did run this piece. But <laughs> my editors insisted on taking out the two beads of sweat, which were the whole point. <laughs> so it ran, you know, without them. So this is the only time you see it with the original play. And then, you know, we got to the point where uh, this is Jules Pfeiffer, who's very uh, well known. And we finally, you know, had someone to vote for. <laughs> uh, so. and, uh, and here is Barry Blitt's work. And Barry Blitt is the artist who does Frank Rich's column every week. And uh, here is during the campaign uh, when Hillary was doing, I think, hey, a fine job as Secretary of State, uh, it was really burdened. Uh, and uh, Iraq is uh, traveling quite lightly. Uh, it, this is a, a piece by Gary Trudeau, who uh, did, you know, he does Dunes, Dunesbury. He, he did a column for the op-ed page for some time and really enjoyed it, but uh, had, uh, his pieces were also, uh, he had a piece killed while it was actually on 
uh, press. We had already published, we had already the first badge, the first edition had gone to the village. And, uh, and, and Powell pulled it because of a word he didn't like. And it wasn't even a vulgarity or anything, but he just didn't like it, so it was pulled. And it cost over a million dollars to do that, to stop the presses. Uh, I am, I think, oh yeah, well there's this Proud one, uh, we began, this one is a piece that Barbara Kruger did, and it was about abortion, and it did run, but I had to take out this word, so they didn't want to have the word body in the Times, it was just, you are a battle branch, you are, the you are. Uh, <laughs> and I, I can stop now because uh, there, there's lots more, but you can read it, see it in the book, and I'd love to hear what your questions are, and, uh, or if you want to see some more. Christians, she go on that code. It's probably on that code. That's Christians. Uh, those few that went out. Uh, huh? Is it one hour? Uh, no, fine. So it's an hour, right? Like He's a second. Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a collector's item. If you would get them, yes, they should be Yes, you should find it. You should look for it. Well, I'll do it. something to Google it. Oh, the, the art always belongs to the artist. Yes, the, the New York Times uh, gets first rights only. So how did you give the original? Well, because I was the artist. Oh, oh, okay. I was the artist in that case. And uh, very often, uh, artists would get this request. And often somehow feel that the art that they do belongs to them. And uh, so, but it doesn't. It belongs to the artist. And, so I would often negotiate you know, uh, deals to help artists figure out how to get art. I gave it to Nixon because I, I'm not going to, I mean, you know, I'm not going to uh, argue with him about uh, money. And I, and I didn't really care that much about the art. It wasn't that important to me. Uh, and I put a little friend and just uh, gave it to him. And, and he gave me his memoirs. And, and ever after that, as long as he was alive, which wasn't that long, but, but he sent me all of his books. And they were all dedicated. And he wrote me this you know, long, beautiful letter while I was there. Uh, it was funny because it was all on the right side. His writing was all on the right side of the paper. And he spelled the word, word peace wrong. Not the, not the war piece, but the peace of something. And he said, he spelled that wrong. Probably didn't know what it means. I'm sorry? He probably didn't know what that word means. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> That's possible, yes. My, my background is on in advertising design. Uh -huh. And I was the production manager in the uh, New York Jewish Week. And there was always some sort of conflict of actual art as opposed to the advertising <coughs> art. How did you manage to avoid conflict with the ads I mean, did you actually uh, have a say in that? Uh, one of the one of the terms I use in this book is church and state. 
and I use it in two ways. I refer to the newsroom as the state, and the church, and the church is the editorial board. Um, and they're quite separate. But even a greater divide is between all the editorial matter and the advertising matter. And that is, again, uh, forgive me, but the, you know, the, the church is the <laughs> editorial and the state is the advertising. However, and, and there is no, absolutely no interface. That is very, very important. That's uh, it, 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 it's like uh, pulling rip, you know, and, but, um, Can you change the thing? But there was never a, there was, there was yeah. Where'd you get this? A lot of cooperation uh, in terms of uh, needing advertising. And now the Times needs advertising more than ever. And, and as you know, they've just announced that they're going to be charging in 2011 for, for full internet access to the Times. Do you think uh, that's a good idea? Well, it, you know, the, the New York Times is a, a very important uh, newspaper, and despite all the problems I had with them, because I'm uh, far left of, of, of them, and I'm also uh, uh, pretty feisty uh, in terms of being quite independent and, and standing up for, you know, hard and, and fight, uh, but um, I think that the, the New York Times is, you know, it has reporters, uh, you have to remember that when something happens, uh, as it just did, also plants, you know, the, the New York Times already had reporters. They didn't have to send reporters there. Or in Tehran, or Baghdad, or Kabul, Gaza, you know. It, it, there are reporters all over the world. So you're saying they scooped everyone before? No, I'm not saying that at all. Uh, what I'm saying is that they are the newspaper of record because they work very hard and they create the journalism, uh, a publication that is fact-checked, researched, and edited, and is, uh, they make every effort. They screw up. There are lots of horror stories, like the Judy Miller, who I feel is partially, you know, res well, partially responsible for, for the Iraq War, uh, for her pieces on the front page. And I, we all have quarrels. Everyone has quarrels with the New York Times, uh, for all, every different uh, I got a call one day in my office say, from a woman saying, how did you publish that obit today in four columns? My aunt, my great aunt, who just died, you know, you only gave her two columns, and she was far more important than this woman. So, I mean, you know, it, we all, uh, I hear more and more about Arab Israelis than anything else. But, um, <laughs> The, the time still, I feel, is uh, <coughs> extremely valuable. It is quoted constantly. I mean, you know, you, you always hear on the internet, everywhere. So that makes them 